Hey what's up guys Kirk here and today I'm going to be showing you how to render a time lapse video in Adobe After Effects CC. So first I'm just going to open up the application and usually when you first open it you get a window which shows you like uh, projects that you've already done things like that. Usually I just close that and the first thing I go to is file. So from down there I go to import and then multiple files. So once that decides to open you'll get this dialog box which has all your hard drives and folders and, and things like that. So I'm just going to go to my desktop and I've put a folder on there of uh, raw images from a time lapse shoot I did up in Glenative which is in the Highlands of Scotland. So we're just going to click that and we've got the very first image so we just click the very first raw image and what you're looking for is all acceptable files uh, make sure your images are in raw and make sure this is selected and then just click open So that's now opened the Camera Raw software that you find in most Adobe uh, applications. And so from here we can edit the shot. So looking at the shot already, it's actually I'm, I'm quite happy with it, it's, it's quite good. But I'm just going to change a few things and get it the way I want. So let's just increase the exposure just a little bit. Bring those highlights down a little. And just add a bit of contrast as well. Now usually you'll crop the image to a 16 by 9 ratio but I'm going to leave it because it gives me more room to play around with a shot once I get it into After Effects and I can see where I want it. And it also means if I add any panning or a zoom to the time lapse, it gives me more resolution to play around with. So I'm just going to see if I can change the temperature just a little bit. It just looks a little too cool. Bump up the vibrance just a little bit, just to bring a bit more colour out of these rocks. Okay, so I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So once you you're done with it, you just click okay so what you got on the left hand side is the it's like a collection of the images so you've got from um, the first images all the way up to number 608 which is all in the folder so from there what you want to do is click the image and drag it to make it a new composition and so this will be here so what it's doing now is creating a time lapse of the the image as a whole, so you you know the asp the ratio, the, sorry the resolution is seven thousand three hundred sixty by four thousand nine hundred and twelve, which is around about six k. So you know the great thing with the time lapse and using RAW and this sort of way, you're really future proofing your footage and having it such a high quality. Uh, but for today I really don't need it that high so for the composition what I'll do is I'll go to composition, uh, composition and composition settings and you can see you can change the frame rate which for me as I'm in the UK is 25 frames and for my settings I'll change it to 4k uh, it's actually, it actually says 4K Cinema, but really it's actually Ultra HD. So it's 3840 by 2160, which is your standard Ultra HD. Um, 4K Cinema is actually, I think it's about 400 pixels uh, more on the width. So that's really, that's it for that one, so I'll just leave it at that. Basically what you do is you can just change the resolution and then you can save it. 
and that's what I tend to do, it makes it a lot quicker. So I just click OK. And what happens is really it will change the size of the image. And what I tend to do to make it fit is click right click, transform, scale. And I just grab one of these and start changing it until it fits into the frame. So usually it's about 53%. Just click OK and zoom out so you can see a bit more of the shot. So I'm just going to zoom out just a bit more. It just means now I can move the image around to a point where I'm happy with how it looks. So, you know, there's, there was a lot going on in the sky when I was taking the shot. You know, there's a lot of water moving, but due to the ice and it was so frozen around there that you're not seeing it all. So trying to get as much of the sky in as possible is what I'm after. So really that's pretty much done. So once you're happy with it, you can you can do other things now. You can like I said, you can add pans, zooms, because the file size is so big, you can do what you want and edit it and do other things to the shot, but I like to have my stuff quite minimal, so from here what I go to is uh, go to composition, add to render queue. And I usually leave the render settings, best settings, and the output module. Now I've created a custom which is time lapse Apple Pro Res 42, so it's a really high quality render. So if you, you can click it and you can go in here and change all your settings. You know, you've got all your uh, file types and things like that, really, and it can get quite technical. So I created a preset with everything I need. So I usually just click that. And then you also want to choose where you put it. So I just click the output and I'll put it on my desktop. Just call it You can save it in the subfolder, do things like that, but usually I just leave it the way it is and just put it on the desktop and then I can move it over to my time lapse drive. So all you do is click save. Now what I do usually, because the rendering can take a while depending on your computer, for mine, it, it, sometimes, depending on the size, especially in 4K, it can take a while. So what I tend to do is I'll do all my renders at once so from here I would do another time lapse and I'll edit it get it the way I want and eventually I'll have a, a queue of about I don't know, 10 shots maybe and you know if I, if I go to bed or I go and have my lunch or something that's when I'll click render and let it do its thing and leave it for a bit because it, it takes a while and it's a lot to process so but for this one it's just a one shot all you do once you finish is click render and this is the final shot being completely rendered and finished off. So it can take a while, sometimes it, it can take a few minutes, sometimes it can take half an hour. It really depends on the size. You know, because I'm going to Apple ProRes 422, that's of quite a high quality codec. So there's a lot of information in there. And because I've put it as a 422, it it means I can edit the shot the video shot with a bit more flexibility and I can change things a bit without losing any quality like you would with a H.264 file. So we're just going to let that render out and once it's done I'll show you the finished video. So that's the render all completed and here is the video.